So the next several lights that I'm about to place are going to be less technical and more artistic. So I have the lights set up and I can, for the most part, pretty clearly see my subject. But as, as a whole, the scene still looks a little too dark. So let's see if we can't fix that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do it with this. I decided I'll do it with this spotlight, but I'm going to put it in a few other places. Is I'm going to add in more of these light cones. So if I go to my meshes here, if I go to effect, I have this light cone. So I bring that in here. As you'll see, it's just a cone. Looks very ugly. If I go to materials, I have a few different types of materials that are built to work with this. So if I bring in my hanger spotlight, you'll see it creates this yellow cone. And by the way, for those of you that are using Shader Forge, here's the node network that I use to make it. Basically, I don't even take a gradient texture, I actually take gradients from the UV coordinates. And and I create some remaps of that in order to get this final gradient which goes into the emission multiplied by a color, by a brightness, and then I also have a Fresnel effect in order to make the edges really soft. And the depth blend gives that uh, fading effect whenever it intersects with, with anything. So like here, you'll see there is no harshly defined intersection. So what I can do with that is I can scale it up and maybe I actually change the color to be not quite so saturated because we're going to add a little bit of saturation in the form of post-processing effects later. And you'll see in our game view that looks much, much more dramatic now. All right. So those look pretty good, but they actually make, because they are meshes, they actually make the scene a little bit difficult to work with. So I'm gonna, going to label this one. I'll call this one and then disable it so it's not in my way. Now for the back here. We're not meant to be focusing on the back, but I don't want it to be completely dark. I still want the player to be able to make out that something is there. So let's focus on this door first. This one that is. And maybe I'll make a, let's start out with maybe a point light. Again, no light is ever perfectly white. So this one I might make yellow, maybe even tint a little orange just a little bit so it contrasts nicely with this light from the stand so as you see when those two are right next to each other they complement each other quite nicely now there's still a lot of dark areas in here but before we try to light those up directly with hand placed lights let's see what the light baking does for us. So the baked lighting will actually calculate global illumination and bounce lighting from all of our currently placed lights onto objects that are marked as static. So like for instance, the floor here is marked static because of two reasons. One, it will not move and more importantly because it will contribute significantly to the global illumination. A lot of light is going to be bouncing off of this into other objects. These, however, like these small railings though, I have not marked static. Even though they're going to be stationary, I don't want to mark them as static because if they are, they will be factored into the calculation for the bounce lighting but they will not have a significant effect on it because of their size and their placement. Also, if they're static, that means they're going to have a light map 
mapped onto them, and that will decrease our performance because more memory will be allocated to storing that light map texture. So really small objects like this or this are not going to be marked as static because they don't contribute enough to the bounce lighting. This one is marked as static though because of how vibrant the colors are. And that might have a significant impact on baked lighting. But a large container like this will also be marked static because a lot of light will be bouncing off of it, even though some of these smaller objects around it may not be. Like these three are marked static, but I'm probably going to check off or uncheck static lighting on them. Now, even though I've marked them all as static, how do I actually get the light to start baking? Well, what you do is you need to enable global illumination. So if I go to lighting here and make sure I'm set to scene, you'll see I have pre-computed real-time GI and baked GI turned off. And I just do that so it doesn't keep on trying to bake lighting while I'm working on it. But now that I actually want it to be baked, I will turn on the pre-computed real-time GI, which is the one we want. So as you see down there, it's going at it. And depending on the complexity of your scene, and more importantly, the size of your objects, this can actually take quite a while. The larger your objects are, the more texels it needs to calculate, because those are based off of world space, not local space, and the longer the light calculations will take. Now, we can still work, actually, even while this is happening, and I'll use that to try and explain to you a few tricks to speed up the light bake time. So as I mentioned, the light bake is partially based on the size of the objects, and that is because it is calculating, as you see here, one texel per unit. That is one texel per world unit, one texel per meter. So the larger an object is, the more units it takes up in world space, the more texels it's going to need, the longer the light bake takes. So as you see, I have one object in here that's static, the hanger itself, which is a huge object, and that will most likely take quite a while. However, to help out a little bit, that's why these sections with the circular ship assembly area are actually separate meshes. If you have your objects as separate meshes, they can be calculated in parallel, which will speed up your light bake. As an example, you see that I have the sunlight shining in from the left here. However, the hanger mesh, if I can find it, does not have an outside. It only has an inside. That means that it actually can't cast this shadow that we're seeing. So for that, I needed to put in other cubes like this that could cast the shadow. They need to be static as well. However, to speed up the light bake, I actually split them into several sections. As you see, it's not just one long box that makes up the entire roof, it's actually three. This dramatically speeds up the light bake because that means those three meshes can be calculated in parallel as opposed to having to do the whole thing in one thread. Alright, I'm going to cut ahead to when the light bake actually finishes.